Ghana's economy appears to be recovering following the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Several subsectors of the economy, particularly tourism and hospitality, have suffered terribly. But the opening up of the economy due to the easing of COVID-19 restrictions is bringing back life to many businesses. We've been joined via Zoom by Chief Executive Office of the Private Enterprise Federation, Nano Se Bonsu, for some answers on happenings within the uh, Ghanaian economy. Great to have you on board the marketplace uh, this afternoon, sir. First and foremost, what's your candid view of the performance of the economy in the first half of the year? Well, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for inviting me to share my little uh, knowledge on the uh, economy and how things are evolving. Uh, be better than what was yesterday or the previous year during the height of the pandemic. But we're not out of the woods yet or at all. Because if you look at the uh, credit to businesses, uh, it's not performing even at the level of the previous year or previous six months. The economy businesses are being a little comfortable because of the reduction or because the pandemic has not taken another spike and uh, our employees are feeling a little comfortable to travel to go to work and also stay at the job. But as you said, some of these businesses like the hospitality and the, uh, the, the tourism and all, they're not performing at all. I happen to have traveled around the country and was in one of these hotels in a certain location where there's a lot of tourist attraction, locations where people can go and visit and have a good time. But then the hotel had, uh, I think the occupancy rate is 85. They had only three uh, tenants at the time. For the weekend, they had to keep their generator on because the lights power went out. And the generator was costing almost about 1,500 a day. And they could, the fees that they were charging was nowhere near the daily rate that uh, they were paying for the uh, hotel. So these industries have really taken a beating. And uh, the, the, the point of how can the government assist in the recovery process, uh, assist, assist businesses so far as easing credit, so far as easing uh, tax payments. Because you remember, during the height of the pandemic, government postponed tax payments for a period. Mm. These are things that the businesses can have a dialogue uh, with government and make sure that the government understands the plight of the businesses to enable them to recover fully. Because if we don't, now that competition is coming through our doors, mm. we have to be able sh to make sure that our businesses will stand the competition. Okay. Um, what would you say about government's efforts towards recovery uh, based on the policies or the measures that they've put in place? Is it such that it is creating a win-win situation for businesses and the government as well? No, no, no. I, uh, yes, government is making the effort because, mm. you, you know, the government itself is hurting. They have government businesses. They, they themselves are hurting. But so far as the kind of support to businesses, it's not enough at all. It's definitely not in. It's in the right direction, but it's not enough. Because I'm talking about, look at credit. Look at, you know, businesses, uh, bread and butter is money. Mm -hmm. And if credit is not available to them, uh, that's why. And there's another point measure that we haven't looked at. Decision making by businesses. Business decision making is based upon the direction in our environment, based on the direction of government. When Nana, the president won 2016, the private enterprise prejudged what was coming and hosted the president-elect in December 21st to tell the world how it was going to run the country. Now, so appointments to various uh, leadership roles were made as fast as possible. Mm. Now, this is June. A lot of the state institutions don't have votes. State institutions don't have the leadership. So people are uh, timid in making decisions, basically because they don't know whether they're going to be there or not. And without that, businesses also react to these agencies, what they do to be enable businesses to do. If I look at the credit availability over the period, the same period. You know, businesses are, the credit growth in businesses is 6.6 .6 in January, 7.4 in uh, February, 4.8, and then 6.9. Compared to the previous period where you had 13 double-digit 
kind of growth in uh, business credit. So businesses don't find themselves the way clear to them to make a decision that I'm going to invest long term or medium term. So they just changing gears every other day because they don't know what the policy of government is going to be. That lack of direction on the part of the state institutions who yeah. dictate what the state institutions are going to do and much more the contract and opportunities for businesses is very critical. And as I said, this is June and most state institutions don't have their leadership and the decision making is now a wire anybody. So businesses are also reacting short termish in a way that we're not going to do anything until we know our way clear. Speak of credit, um, the central bank did something very remarkable yesterday, which uh, some believe will bode well for businesses in the next half of this year, which is to reduce the policy rate to 13.5%. I want to pick your reactions on that, uh, first of all. Well, it's in the right direction. Because, you see, the policy rate is supposed to dictate the lending rate by the various lending institutions. Mm. But the policy rate in itself has some skewed elements in it that should not be there. Something like cash in bulk. Because apart from the policy rate is formulated, there's a formula that dictates the policy rate. And that formula has cash in bulk, glorifying a bank, take somebody's deposit, they don't know what to do, put it in the bulk, and you glorify them a percentage uh, profit margins on that. That right. is a no, no. That should not happen, uh, be in there. And then the uh, capital adequacy. These are things that the, the uh, Bank of Ghana should make sure that they're not in the formula. Because if we look at the policy rate, who should have a correlating effect on the banking rate or lending rate, it's not doing that. So you have a margin of almost about four to 500 basis points from the lending rate to the policy rate or from the policy rate to the lending rate. So we think that yes, it's in the right direction, but the real culprit that we have to work with is how to find the a balance on the policy rate influence on the lending rate or the banking institutions or the lending institutions. Hopefully, uh, we are expecting that we would see um, banks uh, readjust to reflect the decrease in the policy rate. But I just want to know how upbeat is the business community about this? What is your expectation? What is the anticipation um, as we expect this to stimulate the economy, enable businesses get some monies to run their, their operations and stimulate the economy? Are you as excited as um, the others are about uh, what this well, would mean? We, we, we're not jumping up and down in <laughs> excitement, but it's Definitely. in the right direction. Okay. And as I said, that adds up to decision-making process, which is very critical. So the policy rate is in the right direction, it's being reduced, and we want to see a further reduction where you see the policy rate would influence the lending rate directly. There's a direct correlation between that. So businesses can now plan and say, okay, a policy rate is reduced to maybe 10%. We know the uh, margin between that and the lend rate is going to be this much. So now, do we go to borrow now or we wait till it reflects in the lending rate? So that is where we want to see some uh, immediate action uh, going forward. Okay. And also, as I said, a dialogue platform between government and businesses would en enable government to lend us to the challenges businesses are facing left and right. Fortunately, the Private Enterprise Federation and its members had the opportunity to meet uh, the honor right honorable speaker and his mm. leadership in parliament. Now the parliament can uh, create its own private bills and others to see how private sector can influence some of these bills that will change the dynamics of doing business in the country. Because all, previously it was only coming from the public uh, angle, the uh, leadership and the executive. But now the executive or the private members looking at the terrain and looking at their interest in, for their constituents will now be able to initiate something that can influence the way we do business. That is something that we think that there must be a consistent dialogue platform between the three forms of government and private sector because the policy makers should learn the impact of their policies on businesses. And then businesses will also learn how policies are formulated. So there's a, a balance of action between the two, uh, the two partners. Okay. So uh, yes, indeed, the, 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 the policy rate reduction is, is great, but it can be done further because it's not going to influence from 20-something to 
16, uh, the lending rate, which is uh, around uh, that kind of uh, levels, yes. At least uh, it's a good start and government appears to be yes. listening to your concerns. So the final one, um, as we conclude our conversation, I'm going to ask you about your outlook um, as we end the first half of the year and we look into the next half of the year. What uh, are your expectations to the business community from the government, from the policymakers? Well, I will be able to predict accurately if we have had this dialogue and to engage government and bring to their the, the attention mm. the kind of things that are plaguing businesses, and especially with the continental free trade coming, competition coming, mm. you know that if the Ghanaians are not empowered, you know, easing tariffs is one, but the tax bite 25% on MSMEs is one of the areas we haven't touched. And so we need a dialogue to bring to the attention of the duty bearers that look, if you continue to do that, these guys will come, you serve our business opportunities, take away the leverage that we have, make them profit margin, and repatriate the profit home. That is something we want to wake up the uh, policymakers to that. So my uh, prediction or my prognosis going forward is that let's have a dialogue. Let's bring all the difficulty businesses are encountering to the attention of the duty bearers so they can make the right policies for Ghanaian businesses to also compete. I hope that dialogue happens. And also, Bonsu, CEO of uh, PEF, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. We really appreciate that you could make time for us on the market, please.